So now if you want to get a little bit more creative with Photoshop, there's a couple of tools that Photoshop possesses within its filter panel that are, I think, quite unused. And it gives us the opportunity to change an image like this into something like this. So let's find out how we do it. So let's start off with this really simple looking landscape here. I've chosen this because the two uh, filters that we're actually going to use are trees and flames. So we're going to add a few more trees to this landscape and then we're going to hopefully try and set them on fire in a safe way. So all we need to do to begin with is go up to filter render and this is where our two options are there are a few other ones in here which are actually quite interesting to play around with things like picture frames and lighting effects and lighting uh, lens flares lens flares and lighting effects will not actually look at today but it is covered in a greater amount of detail in our eye photography light tricks course but the filters we're going to look at today is in this top section, as we said, the trees and the flames. Before we actually get to using any of these, I think it's always quite useful to actually uh, start off with a separate layer. It's just so when we add these effects and we add these objects, we can move them around on the document just to be able to get the positions exactly, and we can edit them a little bit further. If we put them directly onto the document here, onto this image, we're going to be really limited in terms of doing that. So simply either press the plus icon in the bottom of the layers panel, or go to to a layer and new and layer. So let's just call this one tree. So now we've got that layer for our tree. We'll also add a secondary layer and we'll call this one flame. So we'll come back to the flame one in a moment. So we'll just hide that for now. So let's just click on our tree layer. And now if we go back to our filters, go filter, render and tree, we'll now get a little pop-up bar or pop-up window. And this will then give us options of choosing different types of trees, different styles of trees. And you can choose one that kind of suits your image best. Um, now looking through, I think maybe a spruce could actually suit quite nicely. Maybe not so much an aspen tree. Let's have a look. Maybe a maple. Maybe actually the redwood. Given that it's quite barren on the, uh, the right hand side here, we can actually change that a little bit. We can change the lighting direction. Now our lighting on this image is pretty overcast, it's quite flat, so it's not really that well defined in terms of any shadows or any direction, so we'll leave that alone. We can give it a little bit more leaves though, we can make it look a little bit more, um, well a little less barren I suppose. We can also change the size of those leaves as well. So you've got options of being able to kind of render the tree exactly how you want it. But ultimately once you're happy with it, you then just hit OK. Now we have got a brand new tree and it's a fairly decent rendering. Okay, it's not exactly photo quality, but if you're using it in the background as we're going to do now, I think to you know a layman's eye, this probably would be kind of quite you know hard to tell that it's something that has been added in afterwards. Now to scale it and make it a little bit smaller, we can use simple tools such as free transform. So that's edit and free transform and holding down the alt key, we can then reduce the size of this tree or proportionally. And now we can just move it into position that we like. So I'm thinking maybe adding a little bit more of the tree over this side. And in fairness, the colors sit really, really nicely. We've not changed any of the colors in that render. Um, it's, but it's actually kind of blended in quite nicely. And I think if we did a few of them, I think anybody who's not actually seen this uh, do tutorial and just sees the final image would be kind of pretty impressed, I'd like to think. We can then duplicate it by either doing Control and J and creating a duplicate of that layer, or even going to Layer and Duplicate Layer. And instead of having to go back and re-render another tree, if you like the exact same one, then we can resize it and put another one in. And basically just keep doing this and it can be used to whoops and it can be used multiple times over so we're creating more of a forest if the trees look a little bit barren in some of your photographs these are really nice and simple ways of being able to make it look a little bit more fuller a little bit more friendlier you can even hide some in the background potentially maybe make this one a little bit larger and then to get rid of the the actual trunk down the bottom we can add a simple layer mask Make sure we're using our brush tool and it's set to black. And then we'll just pick out a more simple brush, make it a little bit smaller and a bit softer. And then we're just going to mask out the bottom parts of that tree there. Maybe just reduce the saturation a little bit as well. I'm just going to, oh, just, just selecting the image as opposed to the mask. 
and go into adjustments and hue and saturation and bring that panel onto the screen and then if we just reduce the saturation a little bit there just so it's not looking so green it looks a little bit more more white more gray as it does with the trees around it but that's just simply adding those trees again we've only done a couple of different steps here but already we've added some elements that weren't on our image before so this is looking fantastic so now we've got our trees in place now it's time to get a little bit more creative and start setting them on fire <laughs> So again, let's return back to our flame layer here. Let's make sure that is visible. So we're working on separate layers with this document so they're all movable and they're all changeable. So going back again to filter, we'll go down to render and we're choosing the flame option this time. Now, this is one thing that will pop up. It says there's an error because the selected path is required to use this filter. And what that means is that we have to draw a directional line as to where we want the, the, the appearance of the flame to actually be. So what I mean by that is that using the pen tool on the vertical toolbar here, we have now draw a line on our document wherever we want. And we're basically saying this is going to be the shape of the, the flame that we want to add. Now, because we said we wanted to add it to these trees, we're still using our new layer. And just by using the pen tool, we're just going to make several clicks up the center of this tree. So it may not be the world's most impressive rendering that we're going to create just now, but this is to give you an idea as to how these tools work. And then it's down to you to apply them to your own project. So now that we've got our line drawn using the pen tool, we're going to go back to filter and we're going to go to render and flame. And now the panel will be working. So let's just bring it on onto screen here. So very much like the tree uh, rendering filter that we were using before, there are presets here. We can still make changes further within them, but it's good that there's some presets already available. So there's different types of flames. So you can choose and that will give you a, a preview on the screen as to what they look like, as to what you think is going to suit your object or suit the style of your image a little bit more. So I quite like, maybe actually, I'm going to go with that second one there. It's kind of multiple flames. Now we can change again. We've got options here. We can change the length of the actual flames, how wide it spreads, um, any of these little flurs that pop off the side. So it randomizes them all a little bit further. Again, we can change the width of it. I'm going to make it a little bit narrow because our tree is not that wide. And again, we've got options of changing the interval. So you can just play along with these sliders, move it around a little bit and just to kind of get it looking how you think it's going to fit onto your document. Um, at the minute, our flame is blue, which you can kind of keep if you want to keep that kind of cool looking uh, color. But let's go with the slightly more traditional orange tone. So that's looking a little bit more like it. I think maybe make it a little bit more red, maybe a deeper orange potentially. I think that's a little bit more like it really. And again, you've got options further in your advanced panel and the little tab to the at the top of the screen here that we can change the turbulence of this flame so we can make it a little bit more jaggedy. Uh, again, there is an option for called jag underneath as well, which kind of changes more. I think the exposure really is changing the brightness and the intensity in the center of those flames. Uh, again, you've got the option of the opacity, which will, again, fill out those colors a little bit further. But again, lots of different options to play around with. So you can really customize the flame to be exactly how you need it to be. But once you're happy, again, press OK. And now you can see straight away from there that we've got our flame onto our tree. Let's go a little bit closer in. Now it's up to you. You can be kind of a bit more creative with these things and add layer masks and, and start to erase areas a little bit. So don't worry so much about the pen line being in there. That's not going to be on our final document, but we can move things around a little bit further just to make this flame sit a little bit more accurately upon our document itself. I think maybe if we went and added a, a layer mask, make sure our brush is set to black. And again, making sure our brush is nice and soft. We can go a little bit closer in there and just take out some of the flames where we don't necessarily want them to be. If we've gone a bit too far, we can change back to a white brush and we can paint them back in. But overall, as an idea, 
it is a really, really powerful tool. If you wanted to add some sort of fantasy effect to your portrait or to make your landscapes look a little bit more dramatic or just fill them out a bit further with a few more trees, these are really, really simple tools. So I'm gonna play a little bit further, add some more trees, add some more effects, add some more flames and see what we can come out with. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, keep looking out for more iPhotography tutorials. Look out for iPhotography.com where you can learn lots of tips and tricks on our courses just like this. Thanks for watching.